My name is Adrian Palanchar and I manage Operation Bicycle. Operation Bicycle started in 2012 when I moved back to Sonoma and wanted to start some sort of community bike shop. And so I showed up at Teen Services one day and said, uh, I'd like to start some sort of bike program. And they said, great, uh, we have a uh, bunch of tools and some, some old bike parts down in our basement. They allowed me to use the, the space. The president of the, the Board of Teen Services at the time and I and, and my dad and a couple other people clean the whole basement up. It took us a couple of days and we set up as best of a, a workshop as we could in there. It was dark, there wasn't a lot of space, but it, it worked really well for quite a number of years. So as Operation Bicycle grew in interest both amongst the teens and the general public started discovering us and bringing us bikes and saying, hey, can you fix this for me and we'll pay you? And so pretty soon we started naturally outgrowing the space. We had been looking for a place to rent, a place to move out of for about a year. The move itself wasn't particularly challenging because we could actually like physically walk a lot of the stuff down the street or roll our bicycles. We have heating and air conditioning units. The lighting is 10 times better refrigerator, microwave, uh, you know, music, an air compressor, a sink, <laughs> you know, like everything that you need to run a, a proper bike shop. And somehow we were able to make do before, but when I, when I go down and look at the space now, I just, you know, kind of shake my head and, and laugh about how we were able to operate so for so many years down there. I guess living in cities for, for some years um, and getting around by bicycle, I was like sold and committed to the idea of the bicycle being the, the best form of transportation and I needed to get more people to use them. Like I lived in the middle of San Francisco and it's only seven square miles. So like three miles to the beach, three miles to downtown. I mean, while it is a hilly three miles and then you have to come back, so it's a hilly six miles, it's not all that far. The speed limits are also a lot less there and you can't get going as fast. So it does feel a little safer in a strange way. I mean, even though there's so much going on in cities when you're riding, no one's passing you at 55 or 60 miles an hour. If you ask someone, why don't you ride to get to the store? Because I'm lazy isn't gonna be like reason number one. It's gonna be, I don't feel safe. I don't want to ride with the traffic. In the early days, we were doing a strictly an earn a bike program. So basically we'd get bikes donated. A bunch of kids would show up, we'd fix them up and go, here's your bike. Um, and we did that for quite a while. Um, and it got a little chaotic and hard to organize who was getting which bikes, what, you know, why would one kid get like a nice full suspension mountain bike and someone would get like a BMX bike from Target. Then we kind of changed the system a little bit to where you actually had to like put in some time to earn to earn the thing. And the more time and effort you put in, the nicer the bicycle you can earn. You want to shift the bike so it's in the smallest gear, which yours actually already is. So unfortunately, we got to get rid of that too. Yeah. So you can either stab it to make it smaller or cut it and throw it in the uh, rubber. So, not that you should just throw a couple of layers, you need to like attach things, but I know in all of these cases, 
single ones. Yeah. yeah. So you want to take a pick like this and you can pick this out. So you got to go around. You see that one? You got good eyes, right? You can use this. Oh, you got it out with your fingernails. Wow, all right. So I'll, I'm going to let you pick thorns out of that one if you don't mind. We also do uh, strictly like educational classes where all you're earning is knowledge and learning how to learning how to wrench on things. How do you disconnect the brakes? How do you take the wheel off? You know, what to look for, tire and tube sizing. The thing I hope people take away from the, from the classes is just confidence and feeling empowered that, that they can work on their own bike. I see a couple of you guys want to do that. So, do not so what I hope for the kids is just, you know, realize, hey, it's actually not that hard. One, two, it's okay if you, <laughs> if you mess up. Uh, and I tell people, like, I've broken, like, you've, I've messed up everything you can mess up on a bike. Hopefully you don't break them, you know, again, you, you, <laughs> you screw up and then you learn. And the bigger goal of all that is it's going to keep people riding more. So if you can, if your bike gets a flat and it sits in your backyard and then it gets all rusty, that's, that's not good. And yeah, we see that quite often. But if you, um, you know, if you have the, the skills to fix that flat and get back on your bike the next day, you're more likely to continue the cycling as a, you know, means of transportation rather than give up on it. Yeah, so that, that's, yeah, that's the, that's the goal.